Before we go any further, if you care about how real people survive brutal climates with limited resources, subscribe to Iron Age Instincts now. This channel exists for serious history buffs and survival-minded viewers who want techniques that actually worked, not romantic myths. What you're about to hear is one of those techniques, and once you understand it, you'll start seeing ancient buildings very differently. Most people assume Viking warmth came from roaring hearths and thick furs. That assumption is wrong. Fire was valuable, dangerous, and inefficient indoors. What made Viking longhouses livable through Scandinavian winters was a quiet engineering solution built directly into the ground beneath their feet. This was not accidental, decorative, or symbolic. It was deliberate thermal design, refined over generations, and it worked. Why Viking homes needed a heat solution that didn't rely on fire alone. Viking Age Scandinavia dealt with long winters, constant dampness, and limited fuel. Wood had to be gathered, dried, and protected. Fires filled enclosed spaces with smoke, even with roof vents, and sparks could destroy an entire settlement. A hearth was necessary, but it could never be the sole answer. The real challenge wasn't producing heat, it was keeping it. Heat loss through the ground is, well, one of the fastest ways a structure becomes unlivable. Cold earth acts like a sponge for warmth, just pulling it away. The Vikings understood this intuitively, long before thermal physics existed as a discipline. Instead of fighting the cold with more fire, they isolated themselves from it. So, how did the Viking floor trick actually work in practice? The core of the system was layered flooring, built to trap warmth and block ground cold. Archaeological excavations of longhouses across Norway, Iceland and Denmark consistently reveal floors constructed with multiple functional layers. The lowest layer was often compacted clay or packed earth, chosen for its density and moisture resistance. Above that came layers of gravel, sand or crushed stone, materials that drained moisture and reduced frost penetration. On top of this sat organic insulating layers. These included straw, hay, reeds, birch bark, moss or even seaweed in coastal regions. These materials trapped air, and trapped air is insulation. Finally, a walking surface of wooden planks, packed earth, or beaten clay sealed everything in place. The result was, you know, a floor that stayed noticeably warmer than the frozen ground below, even without active heat. When a hearth was used, the warmth lingered instead of vanishing into the soil. Why insulation mattered more than heat generation? This is the key lesson modern people often miss. The Vikings weren't trying to make their homes hot. They were trying to make them stable. A floor that remained just a few degrees warmer than frozen ground dramatically reduced overall heat loss. That meant smaller fires, less fuel consumption, and, well, safer indoor air. In longhouses where animals were kept indoors during winter, body heat added another layer of passive warming. The insulated floor prevented that warmth from disappearing into the earth. Human and animal heat, combined with minimal fire use, created a steady, survivable indoor climate. This wasn't accidental. Floor layers are just too consistent across regions and centuries to be coincidence, you know. In some sites, floors were rebuilt multiple times, 
always maintaining the same insulating structure even as walls and roofs changed. That really tells us the knowledge was valued and passed down through generations. In Iceland, where timber was pretty scarce, turf and earth construction made floor insulation even more critical. Thick sod walls paired with layered floors created homes that resisted wind and cold without relying heavily on firewood, which honestly was extremely limited. Now, how this knowledge can be applied today in real-world scenarios. This isn't just historical trivia, not at all. The principle is simple and actionable. Insulate before you heat. If you're building a cabin, shed, or off-grid structure, ground insulation should absolutely be a priority. Well, a modern equivalent of the Viking floor might involve gravel for drainage, rigid insulation, or, you know, natural materials like cork or straw, and then a sealed walking surface on top. For survivalists or preppers, even temporary shelters really benefit from this logic. Laying down branches, dry grass, cardboard or pine needles beneath bedding dramatically reduces heat loss. People sleeping directly on cold ground lose body heat fast. Vikings, well, they solve that problem permanently in their homes. If you live in an older house with cold floors, Adding rugs, insulated underlays, or ceiling drafts achieves the same goal on a smaller scale. The technology changed, but the principle didn't. Ironically, you know, some later medieval and even early modern homes were actually less efficient. Larger hearths and higher ceilings, well, they increased heat loss. The Viking longhouse, on the other hand, stayed low, insulated, and controlled. Warmth was conserved, not wasted. This is why, you know, many modern passive house designs unknowingly echo Iron Age principles. Airtight construction, thermal mass, and ground insulation. Well, these are not new ideas. They're rediscoveries. This floor trick tells us something important about Viking society. These folks were not reckless raiders, living on brute strength. They were engineers of survival. They observed, tested, and refined solutions over generations. Their homes were tools, just as much as their ships. Understanding this really changes how we view the Iron Age. It wasn't primitive. It was practical, efficient, and deeply informed by lived experience in harsh environments. If this kind of grounded, evidence-based history is what you value, then, well, subscribe to Iron Age instincts. Share this with someone who thinks ancient people survived on luck alone. And stay with the channel because this is only one of many forgotten techniques that still have something to teach us today.